It's summertime. That means there's some things that we need to work on. Let's get right into it. So my name is Coach Coco and I love volleyball. So much so my channel's filled with tips, tricks, hacks, and anything you can ever need to know about volleyball. And in the summer, we know. The summer is when volleyball players are made, and during the year when we're playing is when we perfect our skill. So this summer, there are some things that you can do at home, and I'm starting a no net series. And in this no net series, we're gonna be working on how to practice volleyball without the net. So today, you're just gonna need yourself, outside, and a ball. And then we'll get started. So one of the biggest concerns for a lot of players is the overhand serve. There are a couple of things that you can do at home to practice your overhand serve to make sure that when we are serving over the net, either at workouts or tryouts, it's the most effective serve we can. The first thing is to work on that bow and arrow form. Sometimes we see a lot of players who like to have the crook of the arm and they don't have that 90 degree angle. So I'm going to turn it all the way around so you can see what that looks like because we want to have the best, uh, the best form to promote the best torque. So when we turn our body, we can get the most force when we're swinging. So my hips are pointing outward. The reason for that is when they're pointing outward, that allows when I toss and I step into it, my shoulder is gonna get full range of motion to um, contact the ball. We wanna make sure to get that full range of motion, that way it can help the ball sail over. Sometimes we see players' hips that are just pointing forward and they're not necessarily pointing outward and it's very awkward because they're cutting off their range of motion. Remember, we wanna get that full motion and then not that half of motion. So think about it, full motion, not half of motion. So that's the first step of practice. Now when we're looking at our feet, we want to make sure to have a staggered stance and we're having that foot. So if you are right-handed, you're going to have your left foot forward and your right foot back. If you're left-handed, you're going to have your right foot forward and your left hand back. So we're making sure that we're having that step in. I'm going to slow-mo it so you can see. The reason why I'm doing that step in is to help with that range of motion and to give power and force. Think about it. Before when I had that hip going forward and I had my foot, my back foot going forward, it's very awkward. Try it. It's very awkward. So opening up that hip angle so that way when I step in, I can get more force. That is our next step of practice. Add it all together. We have that bow, arrow, step, and hit. Well, we also wanna make sure that when we are tossing it, we're not tossing it extremely low. We should be tossing it already from our arrow. As you can see, I'm tossing it up straight from my arrow, not going all the way down, straight from my arrow, because we wanna make sure that when we're tossing it, and we're gonna do a tossing drill later, it lands right in front of that serving shoulder and we can get it at the highest point of contact. So we're gonna pretend like we're gonna serve. I'm walking in, I have my bow, my arrow, my toss, and my hit. I have my bow, my arrow, my toss, and my hit. Bow, arrow, toss, and hit. Now look at my shoulder here. I'm going all the way through. My hips are aligning, my feet are stepping in, and when I'm swinging, I'm not stopping immediately up there because I'm not doing a float serve. I'm making sure my swing goes all the way through because I'm just doing an overhand standard serve. Now, sometimes we see players who like to swing across that chest. We want to make sure that when we're swinging, that it does go parallel to the body and not across the chest. We also want to make sure that our air bow is not crooked and we have a 90 degree angle. Now, I've seen some players who their coaches coach them to have their, hand, their arms straight up. If that's something your coach is doing, perhaps try that. However, for the purposes of this video, we want to make sure to have a ball shaped hand, which means I'm just relaxing my hand on a ball. That is the shape of the ball. That is a ball shaped hand. If I were doing a float, it would be flat, but I'm just leaving five points of contact. All of my fingers, one, two, three, four, five. Lay it on the ball. That is all the palm that should be contacting the ball. I know a lot of you guys are wondering, how do I contact the ball? And what part of my hand does so? Your whole hand. So just lay your hand flat on a ball. That is what contacts. So now we're adding the ball in. I'm going to toss and step in. I should not be moving an extreme amount. When I toss and step in, I shouldn't be going past the ball where it drops. The ball shouldn't be coming on top of my head. I should be able to just toss and step in. That is the next part of our drill. Now, a great way to practice this, if your toss is kind of wonky, is to put your arm behind your back and you're gonna toss 
and the ball should drop right in where your serving shoulder is. And if it's going crazy, that means maybe your toss is either too high, it's too forward, it's too back. We wanna make sure that our toss stays right in front of our serving shoulder, and there's a little spot, that little spot next to your foot, that's what we're looking for. Isn't that cool how that works out? So do some repetitions with toss because sometimes, a lot of the time actually, what goes wrong with our serve is our toss. Our toss is wonky, we know it's wonky, we hit it anyway and it goes in the net. So working on that drill, same thing. I think that this is a drill that you can do heavy repetition on because you can always work on your toss and work on that consistency. Not too high, not too low, because the next part of the drill, we're gonna to try to go for the highest point of contact. What that means is with that body form, we're now going to snap, and hit and touch and close the ball in an enclosure at the highest point of contact, making sure to have all of our feet stepping all the way in, making sure to have all of that form, and that's a way that you can start working on your serve without a net at home, no net. Just a quick review, body form, hip angle, bow and arrow, hand contact, working on your toss, and putting it all together. Let's look at some serving clips using the Fair Use Act of 1976. So here we have a collection of volleyball games that are high school and middle school level. Looking at some of those serves, we wanna make sure we're starting with that standard serve. And looking at game tape is a great way for you to have some better understanding of the nuances of volleyball, especially at your skill level. We have some jump floats, which I thought was a great way to include that, especially if you are going past the standard serve. You can look at some jump float footage. If you feel like you're just beasting it this year and you're moving past the jump float, it's natural to go in the upward progression and start working on your jump serve. So we wanna start with the overhand standing serve, then we go to our standing float, then we go to our jump float, and then we can go to our jump serve. And looking at some of these players is a great way for you to have a better understanding of the body mechanics and looking at some game tape to, to see really your skill level. So in review, I want you to have fun this summer, but work on things in your own time with no net. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful for you, that you learned a way that you can do it without a net. Please like, comment, subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys next time for our next part in the series.